I hope you're doing well. My name is Karl Heinz and I create videos to share my passion to build and maintain websites. Today I will fix a few issues I have regarding the photos published in my website Mew.com. But first, let's start with a short overview on my setup using Obsidian as CMS. So what you see here is a simple schematic on how my uh, setup with Obsidian is structured. You have on the left side Obsidian, my Obsidian wall with 2000 plus notes about species, parks, web page, photos, videos, recipes, written in English, German or Spanish. I have programmed a few Python scripts which collect this data in the Obsidian world and merge the content with Jinja templates to create static web pages. I call this script a static web page generator. I am so fond of my page generator that I even use it to create a page about the to-do list I'm maintaining for the different websites. And this, what we are looking here now is the content of our video today and maintained like all the content of web pages in my websites in an Obsidian node. Here you see the node and here the web page created. So what I want to do today is I want to uh, fix some issues I have with the image photos, which I publish in the website mu.com. In particular, I want to have a, a photo embedded in text within uh, different content sections. And I want to address an issue I have with my top banner. Let me show the two formats in the web in an example web page. This is an article about identifying whales. I use this as a good example because it has first the top banner and the image here within the content. You see. So I want to uh, improve the way how this image are presented and I want to have a fix here. So let's start with this one here. What we need to do is we need to create a template for these embedded photos so that we have a defined HTML structure to uh, be inserted where the photo should appear. We need a Python function that identifies linked image within the node and replace it with the correct HTML. And at the end, we need to do some CSS adjustments to make it look nice. So let's go first into a node to see how we declare the image. You see here, for example, this is Belu the section about beluga whales. We have here an obsidian link pointing to a node about this photo. When I look at here first, this is the preview. And when I go with the mouse over, I see that there is the note of this photo with the, the details. So this is the way how I planned to uh, add the image to the content. We have other ones here, minky whale. This should also, here we have a photo of the minky whale, humpback whales etc. As I mentioned before, what we need to do first, we need to prepare the template for that image. Here we, we are looking at the Jinja template for this embedded photo. It's a figure tag with the picture tag source and the fallback for those browsers who are not capable to read source and source set. We have different uh, formats. So here I have to fix something. The fallback should also be the one pixel resolution, small file size. So we have here for the one time resolution, let me scroll here a bit to the right. So you see we have a 200 pixel, 200 pixel. That's because the image size is defined with width and height for 200 pixels. We have the two times retina display. We increase to 400 pixels. 
and three times to 600 pixels. So this is the tag we want to introduce for these embedded photos. The second thing what we need is a function that looks for uh, links to photo nodes within the content and replaces it with this uh, template. So let's have a look at the function I'm using. It's replace photos. Replace photos needs three elements. One is the sitemap dictionary, which is a dictionary that includes HTML of all web pages. We have a photo dictionary, which is a dictionary that includes information about all the photos and the language to switch language in the template. Sitemap dictionary and photo dictionary are previously collected from the vault and inserted into a dictionary format. Sitemap dictionary includes the content from the node, but already converted each section into an HTML code. Then we define the template where it's found, what's the name, which version, and we loop through all photos and through all uh, content, all photos, all content, and we look for this pattern here, which is the obsidian link to a note of a photo. And we replace it here in this step with a rendered HTML code of the template merged with the details of the photo. Where do we use this function? We use this function almost near the end of the whole build script. So here we are in the final step where we uh, loop through the whole uh, collection of documents already converted into HTML and we replace all photos in all documents using the function just discussed before. And once this is ready, we have some final cleanups happening and then we save it into the file if the file generated has changed compared to the one currently saved. We only update files which are changed. We do not replace files with the same content. There's a reason for this, but I will go into more details in another video. So what we do now is we run a collect, collect script, collects all the content from the Obsidian Vault, and we run a build, which means the collected information is now merged with templates and the page generated. Here is our page. Let's do an up, a reload. And let's have a look here at the, the tag. So we have here now a image tag with the source set one times, two times, three times, like we plan to do. It's not yet looking that nice. So what we will have to do right now is do some CSS adjustments. What I want to happen is that the image is on the left side and the text flows around the image. That's what I want to achieve. So let's go to the CSS file that defines the design of this page. I already prepared here the section embedded photos. That's what we want to deal with. And we have to define the float left and that the text goes around. Here, this code will address the figure tag within a div. I do have another figure tag for the top banner, but because we specify here which figure tag it must be within a div, we do not interfere with the banner on top. We want to have a float left. We want 
to uh, text the line left. That's absolute, uh, actually, I don't think necessary, but let's keep it for now. And we want to set the background color to one, which is this white background color, not the gray we usually have as background colors for our figure tags. And the padding top on the pad margin right, I will remove them from now so you can see why I add them. Let's reload. And you see the text now flows around the image, but you also see that it starts a little bit lower and tight to the photo. We would like to have a little bit distance there. So that's where this comes in place. Let's put first this one here in. So now we have a nice space, maybe a little bit too tight, but let's keep it for now. But we see also that this image here starts higher. I don't really like this, so I push the image a little bit down with this padding top. So now we can remove this and save and reload. And we have it nicely where we want to have it placed. You agree? So let's switch a little bit here the format. Let's go to uh, what do we have here? iPhone 12, small screen, 390 pixel. Looks nice here. We still have the square uh, picture and the text around. Looks good here. Perfect. Let's go to another page. Uh, uh, let's say, yeah, uh, let's make first a smaller, uh, do we have here iPad? Yeah, let's put this one, iPad 810. Looks nice. So let's remove here the response. Let's go to a larger screen. Boom, something like that. Fine, it's good. Let's see another page. And the good thing is I prepared because I know there's a page which won't work that nice. Let's try to squeeze it a little bit to see what happens when we squeeze it. So here is like the one, now it gets to another format. And you see in, when, in this setup here without the column on the left, it starts to invade the footer. That's something we don't want. How do I resolve this? What we will add here is a minimal height for the wrapper that has a figure in it. Just to make sure that when we do this left and float around, that if the text is shorter than the space, the photo will not uh, invade containers below. So let's go back here and do a reload. And now it stays fine. So let's squeeze it further. Looks good. Here now we the, the, this button goes from the right side here to the left side because we are now in the mobile size screen. That's where I want to have it. Still looks good. Let's squeeze further. Looks good, looks good. So I think this task has been achieved. I'm happy with it. So from now on, I can uh, easily uh, add to any type of text container a photo by adding a, no uh, a link to the note of that photo in Obsidian. So uh, as a plus, I would like to address an issue I have with this top banner. So the problem I have, and you see it here with Firefox, is a cumulative layout shift. When the first page loads, it uh, the space for the photo is not used. And once the photo loads, it pushes the content down. That's something you should try to prevent because it delays rendering of your content. How do I uh, resolve this is by declaring the space as a block element 
before the image loads. And the image, once it loads, it just loads into that space that already has been reserved. First, I will define some about this figure on top. You see now here this body figure. So it's a figure tag that is immediately an immediate child of the body tag. I will display, uh, define here a grid with a grid template column one. So we have the image and the fig caption below. No gap with 100% occupy the whole width. Then as a next, we want to make sure that the image is also pushed the whole width. That's this tag for. This is preparation just to make sure that uh, the Cumulative layout sh uh, shift still happens, but make sure that uh, this is a defined space and it will not do any fancy uh, stuff once we will add the other statements. So as next, we will add statements to the picture container. It's a picture container within figure container. We want to declare this as relative with 100%, no padding, no margin. Here, the important thing is this position relative because we will tell a child within this tag to be position top zero, left zero. And uh, if we wouldn't have that here, the position relative for the parent container, it will go to top page, left, right. That's what we don't want. So this one is without any effect, it still happens. The fix comes now, where we declare the image tag to be position absolute left zero, top zero. And for a suspension, it will not yet fix our cumulative shift. But what we tell now defined, the image should start here. But you see already some stuff changed here. It disappeared some of the text below the image. And we will fix that now by telling that we want to have space after the start of the image for and here we talk we are mobile first designs so we start by putting it at 100 percent but followed by a 75 percent because in the smallest because when i look at a small iphone and let's now reload we want to have the space of the photo and when we have the small size the photo is actually spanning or oh, is 100% here 75% in height as i do that now we have this background padding which prefers, uh, prepares the space <coughs> for the image if we increase the size let me see if we have here also kind of a responsive no we don't have so let's remove this here and let's get down. So if if we get bigger, we see the format changes. That me uh, because in the declaration of the source set, I tell at screens larger than five hundred twenty, I want to change from one hundred percent seventy five percent to two to one. So I do a media query and say if the screen is larger than five hundred twenty pixel, then it's fifty percent to two one. So instead of 75% for small devices, it goes to 50% space save below. And if we save this, you see it now works again. It occupy, it prepares the space necessary to show this. Uh, so now we have a new breakpoint and here I have three to one, 768. We want to reserve only 33% of the width Voila. And then we go up and there will be another breakpoint. And we need to have also here with a media query address this situation. In this one, the space that has to be reserved is 25%. That's it for today. I hope you find this topic interesting. If so, please use the comment section below to provide me some feedback. 
Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. See you. Bye-bye.